Holy Spirit upon us and open the eyes of our hearts and our minds to the knowledge of the gospel for thou art good and merciful and men we pray in God. Amen. 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 Well, yep. well, you know, since I have to use both hands to walk over, it's hard for me to bring my Bible, my New Testament with me. So, uh, uh, the one subject you wanted to touch on, we're still looking at the first epistle of John. And more than once, Christ is called our only mediator between God and men. So if that's exactly the case, why do we ask each other to pray for us since intercessions and prayers for each other is a kind of mediation? But if we stop and think about uh, sectarians often use that argument against uh, asking the saints to pray for us, although we can ask mm -hmm. the saints in the church to pray for us. But uh, you stop and think about it a minute. If Christ is God, is the incarnate Logos, how is he the mediator between God and men? The mediator between himself and men? So that's what we're saying, really. But, of course, Christ mediated between God and man by taking on our flesh and uh, overcoming our alienation from God. That's what he mediates, is the end of our alienation. And uh, the, the, what a possibility of man's reunion with God. So uh, when we say that Christ is the only mediator between God and man, he's the only one who actually took on the flesh, became man, and restored our uh, erased our alienation, so he mediates the end to our alienation from God. And uh, being uh, truly a man as well as God, he uh, cons continually shows us the end of our alienation and the uh, possibility of our complete reunion with God. So that's how we should understand God as a Christ is the mediator between God and man. But uh, he has carried our human nature and uh, purified it and carried it into the heavenly kingdom. But to ask for each other's intercessions, uh, we're also commanded to do that in the scripture. So we ask for each other's prayers. And really, our prayers for each other are more uh, an act of unity and love than anything else. And uh, so we ask the saints to pray for us also, because uh, God is a God of the living and not of the dead. That's, uh, Christ uh, corrected the Pharisees on that. Uh, you know, Isaac and Jacob and Abraham, they're alive unto God, because God is a living God of the living and not the dead. So the saints aren't, as some sectarians say, all those dead saints you've asked for prayers. Well, yes, they did die. But God is the God of the living and not the dead. So uh, in the flesh, they died, but not their souls. And their souls are together with God in the heavenly kingdom. And in a way that the rest of us are not, because these are people who have been perfected by the Holy Spirit, by the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. And uh, they, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we class them as saints in a special way, although Paul calls everybody in the church a saint, because the word saint simply means dedicated or set apart. So if we're dedicated to God, well, we're saints. That's why we have holy water, holy vessels, you know, holy chalice, holy uh, discos, holy table, all these things because they're consecrated to God. That's what the word saint means. And that's why you say uh, in the uh, <coughs> In Greek, it's a little more clear. Agios of Theos, Agios and Skiros, Agios. And also, Agios David. So, it's the same word. It's the same word. Holy and saint are the same word. It's only in English that we have two words for it, because one from German and one from French. Yeah. So, holy comes from Heilige in the German, through the Saxon to us. And uh, saint is from... Latin or French, through French. So we have two words for it, other languages don't. That, you know, and I don't know in Romanian, but uh, in uh, the Svinta, in uh, 
uh, so you say, you know, Spinta Dom Deseo, and you yeah. also say Spinta, uh, you know, Spinta Paraskiri. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's the same word. Yeah. And in Slavonic, it's Shati, Shataya. Yeah. And that's why that people misunderstand the name of the Church of Divine Wisdom in Constantinople, because it's called Saint Sophia, but it means Divine Wisdom. And it is the Church of Jesus Christ, the Divine Wisdom. And uh, that's why the uh, troparian for that is uh, Jesus Christ, the Word, the Wisdom, and Power of God that sustains all, creates and sustains all things. So uh, that's uh, when we talk about that God is mediator, it doesn't pre preclude us mediating for each other, us interceding for one another, and even asking the saints to intercede for us, because uh, Christ is mediating something completely different. At the same time, the Apostle enjoins us not to miss the mark anymore. Uh, once we are, uh, become Christians or are baptized and crucified, we shouldn't miss the mark anymore. You know, that's what the word sin means, is missing the mark. And, uh, but if we do, he assures us that we have uh, forgiveness through repentance, that we're not doomed because we fell short, uh, that uh, the merciful God accepts our repentance. But let's then talk about what the word repentance means, because it's uh, clear in uh, Greek, metanisi in Old Greek, or metania, means to turn around and go a different direction. That's what the original word that's used in Scripture means. <laughs> and uh, repent in, in English is to rethink. So when we say to, to rethink our life, to rethink our actions, to rethink our deeds, and uh, so to, as, as it is in the great to turn around and go a different direction with our lives. And that's why <clears throat> in icons you see that Lines get narrower toward the front of an icon. Uh, in an ordinary painting, the lines get narrower to show depth in an icon. They look, of course, it's a flat plane, but the, the lines getting closer together makes it look like it's disappearing in the distance. But an icon is exactly the opposite. The lines come narrower toward the front. And that's because the icon, like the Holy Scripture, reverses our perspective changes our perspective around. That's why we have reverse perspective in icons, because they're faithful to the gospel. And the gospel reverses our perspective and turns it around. And uh, that's, that's part of the standard parts of icons. So repentance is to rethink our actions and our deeds and even our whole lives and try to change them or turn them around. <coughs> We're assured by the apostles that no matter how many times we fall short, we're always forgiven by repentance, through repentance. And uh, I remember a story from the Desert Fathers. Now I can't at the time remember which, which of the Patiras, which of the fathers it was. But a young novice came to him for confession. He said, Father, I fell. And the Abba says, pick yourself up. Okay, he goes away. The next day he comes, but I fell again. Pick yourself up again. Third, third day, fourth day, fifth day, keeps falling. So he asked the Abba, Abba, how often can I pick myself up? So, Until you don't fall anymore. <laughs> Keep picking yourself up. And we, if we're real Christians, we'll try to help pick each other up. Not to push each other down, but to pick each other up. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, many times in our parishes we have envy, gossip, and slander. And we're glad to find out something bad about somebody. <laughs> but if we're real Christians, I'm sorry, we can't do that. <clears throat> you know, cover your brother's sins, the apostle says. Cover your brother's sins, and uh, help. You have to have, you have to pick people up so they'll be standing when you fall, so they can pick you up. Because you're going to need to be picked up too. So uh, let's, let's think about that uh, seriously, about what it means.
to, uh, God's going to forgive us for repentance. We don't know the heart or the mind of any other person. You don't know, maybe they fall in sin, but you don't know how hard they repent, how much they struggle to repent. You don't know how much sorrow they have inside because they fell. So you can't judge them. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but uh, that's one of the critical parts of learning to be a Christian. And one of the most difficult parts is learning not to judge and condemn our, our neighbor. Although we say it over and over again in the prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian. They what do I say in the prayer? Help me to see my own faults and not to judge my brother. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a critical aspect of being a Christian. And uh, we uh, <coughs> need to learn greatly, especially, <coughs> to uh, acquire that aspect of being a Christian. And we, we oh, thank you. We use the word Orthodox Christian, or Christian all the time, but very often we don't see that Christian aspect. We don't see that <clears throat> we won't be forgiven unless we forgive. We forget that. To forgive unto 70 times 7. And uh, this is the part about, Who art thou, old man, that thou judgest another man's slave? For by his own master he stands or falls. So, and since we're all the servants of Christ, then who are we to judge the servants of Christ? Let Christ judge. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can't, that's, this is the sad part, is we see somebody sometimes taken in a fall, and we start judging and condemning. We have no idea how deeply they're repenting inside. We have no idea if they're really struggling with all their might to repent, to rethink, to change their lives. We don't know that, but we can knock them off the path by judging and condemning them. We can push them back into the darkness. We can ruin their struggle. And <clears throat> I said it, to judge and condemn another person erases all your prayers. All your own prayers, all your own struggle can be erased in a second by judging and condemning someone else. So, and all your best intentions are worthless if you're judging and condemning another person. So let's uh, try to make that a part of the struggle of Great Lent. It's not just about food, of course we understand that requires our self-discipline and self-will self to actually keep the fast. But the spiritual part of the fast requires more work than the physical part. It's easy to abstain from meat and dairy products. Not easy to abstain from gossip and from judging people, from condemning others. So that's, uh, that's the big struggle of Greatland for all of us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's pretty well all I have to say today. I wanted to say uh, just to understand why a Christ is our only mediator, why we still pray for one another, bother to hand in our little Pomana slips for prayers at Postcomedia. And uh, uh, so that's <clears throat> to understand what it means. And to understand that repentance means rethinking. Rethinking everything. Yeah. So we need to constantly repent, not just come to confession, that you can repent, of course, anywhere. And God accepts your repentance anywhere. But uh, it takes a little effort. Anybody have any questions? Yes? If um, a person forgives but doesn't forget, is that, does that alienate us from God? Well, sometimes you have to forgive and not forget because there are people you know that, okay, you'll forgive them, but you don't associate with them anymore because to lead you into more temptation and more sin. And uh, if people, okay, you don't want to judge and condemn, but you don't want your kids playing in their house. <laughs> that's that's uh, 
that's something that you, you have to, you know, there has to be a certain amount of assessment of, uh, in these situations, especially when you're raising children. And uh, so you, you, uh, you have to make certain kinds of judgment. For example, if you saw somebody trying to, I don't know, groom one of your kids, you're definitely going to judge them and intervene in it. And uh, 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 you don't want your kids around them. But, okay, then separate yourself from them and forget, forget the rest of judgment. But uh, this, this has to be understood in something of a relative manner because you do have to make certain uh, judgments that are for self-defense or the defense of your children, defense of your, of your spouse or uh, and things like that. So sometimes you can forgive but not forget and it's fine. Sometimes you say, like the Russians sometimes say, I can forgive but I'll never forget. <laughs> In other words, that's, that's, that's what husbands and wives do very often. They forgive each other, but they store all of the stuff in the back of their mind for when you have an argument. See, they, they, want, to, they want to pull it out and throw it at you again. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, part of, that's part of marriage. <laughs> so, you know, she puts the men leave the toilet seat up and she puts the fluffy things on it so it won't stay up when you want it to stay up. And uh, men squeeze toothpaste in the middle. And women would have rolled it from the bottom, and you know, there's different little things like that. But uh, but uh, husbands and wives are good at, at, at suddenly remembering something that happened ten years ago when they're having an argument. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard when you live in a family of all women and they, they neuter your male dog. It's difficult. Malik, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I asked it. I have I have asked this question because one person asked me here yeah. uh, at the meal in the past and said that uh, she confessed to a priest and the priest said yes you, you're forgiven that you for your sin is forgiven because you have you forgave the person but the great the sin forgetting not forgetting it's a greater sin and I it didn't fall well that uh, yeah that depends because usually when we don't forget it's because we feel like we were offended personally or something mm -hmm. and we our pride makes us hang on to that in a way that we don't forget. Mm. It's just, <clears throat> it, you know, when, when my son Adam wanted to go play uh, play Dungeons and Dragons in the 80s, it, uh, he was, uh, but I, before I would let him go and play the game at somebody's house, he would get so upset with me because I'd insist on going to the house first. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because, I, well, you know, not to judge or condemn, but to see I wanted to know where he was and what was happening and what, what kind of environment it was. And, uh, but I mean, after I checked it out, I did order a big pizza for the kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was, <coughs> but I checked it out first. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that, that, and that would have been a values judgment of sorts, because uh, if it had been something I didn't approve of, he wouldn't have been there. So, but, yeah. So, Vladika, what I hear you saying is that, in a sense, in a sense, mm. there's a righteous, or there's a virtuous way to judge. Yeah, yeah. But there's also a vicious or a vice way to judge. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. there is. And the virtuous way to judge is really, this is, um, uh, it, you know, in, in the, when we're told not to be part of the world, because it's not talking about the created world, it's talking about the society of the world. And... Uh, we have to make a judgment about what television programs we'll let our kids watch and uh, you know, what we're going to let them access on the computer, what we're going to access on the computer ourselves. And uh, that's, that's a judgment in a way. But that's not a, a personal judgment against an individual. It's, a, in, it, it's more a judgment against a situation or something. But we have to make certain judgments, otherwise we can't decide right from wrong. I mean, we have to judge about right and wrong, which course to follow. And um, when we when we fall into something, and everybody falls into something sometimes, uh, we have to take some kind of judgment about the fact that it's wrong. So that's uh, there, we have to think about 
a kind of, um, where it doesn't affect us. Why do we judge people that don't affect our lives? But we do. You know, that's a, that's a very sad thing. It doesn't change our lives, doesn't really impact on our lives, doesn't affect our lives, but we still judge and condemn. And that doesn't make any sense. I remember years ago, when I was a young deacon, I used to ride, I'd go into Vancouver and stay overnight, old Ukrainian babushka, old, and she was already in her 80s. And, <clears throat> okay, I'd sleep on the couch, but I'd hear her making metanias all night praying. <laughs> I was kind of ashamed of myself. But um, <laughs> I didn't. But uh, we rode to church on the bus, and she'd always, always reading her prayer book all the time. And I asked her if she read her prayer book all, 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 all the time when she rode the bus. She said, yes, because if I look around, I might see somebody who will tempt me. And then, oh, Change. two sins, them for tempting me and me for, <coughs> only for judging them. Mm -hmm. And since I don't want to Messy. judge them, I don't look. <coughs> so that's the best way to keep from judging. Excuse I thought she was a Kalina Gabriela, and she was quite a majestic lady. Mm -hmm. you know. Saint. So, uh, mm -hmm. she's, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, she'd pray all night, and she didn't want to do anything to keep from judging someone. That was, so I thought, ah, well, okay, don't look. <laughs> if, it doesn't, if it doesn't involve you, don't look. <laughs> and if, if somebody's life, lifestyle, life, whatever, doesn't affect you personally, or your family, your immediate family, yeah. then why are you going to bother to judge? Just agitate your soul by judging. None of your business, don't judge. So uh, that's, that's just it. You know, that's the trouble is sometimes the faith, we, we think so much and judge so much that our faith collapses into an ideology. Yeah. And it's no longer a living faith for the living Christ. It's an ideology. It's our pride telling that everything should be this way because I think it should be this way. See, it's me. I'm the final arbiter. <laughs> and as I heard, the best way to commit <coughs> spiritual suicide is to climb to the top of our ego and jump off. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's that's our problem. See, anybody who's not like me is a little bit iffy. Yeah. So that's that's what we have to watch. Be careful about. Yeah. Anyway, anybody else have anything? Yeah. Then, Ladika, I mean, you're talking about judgment and all. But sometimes it's not just about judgment, it's about I making the decision yeah. not to go visit those people, I have nothing in common with them. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I, I'm not judging them, I yeah. have nothing, well, no, but I, I realize that I have nothing in common with them, why would mm -hmm. I do that? Well, of course, or you, you so realize that's a decision that if you that go and visit your, uh, somebody, yeah. uh, they're going to be, leave their angry or leave their, you know, uh, leave their... Uh, having sinned because you were there. Mm -hmm. So you take a decision not to be there, mm -hmm. and not to associate with that person because they always lead you into some kind of agitation yes. or anger. Yes, yes. And, um, or even worse, I think I told you once about my, my uh, foster sister was, her, her daughter wanted to overnight with a friend, and she told her, and her daughter came back using all kind of foul language and things, and the uh, um, sister asked her, where did, you, where did you hear those words? She says, oh, they're mommy and daddy, use mm. those words. And uh, it turned out that mommy and daddy also watched pornography on television. On, on, uh, I don't know what they had, those VHSs or something. And uh, so that, no, you're not going to take a decision. You're not going to let your daughter sleep overnight there anymore. Yes, yes. So that's... Uh, and that's what I did with Adam. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, there was only once when I wouldn't let him stay somewhere because I saw a bunch of empty liquor bottles in the back porch. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, no, I don't think this is any good. Mm -hmm. But that's the decision I took. It's a decision, yeah. yeah. If they want to drink, fine, but not around my son. Exactly. <laughs> no, but uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of a different thing. So you have to use a little common sense mm -hmm. in these like, matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Anyway, anybody else have anything? Okay. Thank you. It is truly meet to call the blessed Theotokos, ever blessed and most pure and the Father of our God, 